Ooh, <laughs> welcome in to Outkick, the show, Beachside Mansion Edition. I am down here for the next two weeks. I have no idea how the Wi-Fi is going to work, so let me know if you can actually hear me. Let me know if it's not skipping. Um, I am sitting out, looking out over the spectacular beach. Still will be doing, because I'm the hardest working man in all of media, I'll still be doing everything that I normally do, except I'll be doing it from the beach. Um, and so uh, I am down on 30A. Uh, I appreciate uh, all the feedback. Bonus knowledge right off the top here. If you are down at the beach and you are an OutKick fan, I am going to be out tonight at the Hub watching Game 6 of the Preds going up against the, uh, the terribly undermanned Ducks. And so uh, you guys are, are going to be able to uh, able to hang out with us. So again, I'm doing the show all every day down here. So uh, everybody's asking, where can you meet up? Where will you be on 30A tonight? I will be at the Hub. So if you were on 30A and you want to come watch the Preds-Ducks game, then uh, I will be at the Hub. If you don't know where that is, you can try to research it. If you don't know where it is, you're probably not on 30A. So yes, at any point my kids may interrupt. At any point the Wi-Fi may vanish. But it's important to recognize that Outkick the Show is always here for you. Outkick the Show, even if I'm having to go for the first time ever from my actual iPhone because the normal iPhone that I use is not good enough to be able to do it. Uh, it is going to be uh, pretty fantastic, I think. Again, uh, I am Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show. It's presented by Oddshark. Go to Oddshark for all your gambling and informational related needs. At some point, if the Wi-Fi complies, I will give you guys a tour of this house. It is phenomenal. I'm in Inlet Beach, which is right next to Rosemary. We are right now, I tried to set up with the ocean directly behind me here. So I'm going to turn it around. I don't know if you guys can see. Let's see if this works or not. I'm not sure if it's going to work. This, this doorway that you see right here, and if I'm trying not to lose any of the phones, you see that doorway? That's a balcony that looks out over the ocean. I'm not sure how well you guys can see it. If I only had one... I would, uh, I would definitely get you guys hooked up. But because I've got multiple Facebook and Periscope going live right now, and also you see that I've got like a, a nautically themed uh, room right now. Again, down on Inlet Beach on the Gulf uh, for the next two weeks. We'll be doing the show normally, uh, just like uh, we always do. Uh, but wanted to give you guys a heads up. All right, let's start with what is probably the craziest story. So can you guys hear me okay? Everything good here. I've never done the show, obviously, from this location before, so I want to see uh, if you guys can hear me okay. Let me know if everything is good. I want to make sure that everything is good. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and dive into the show here. LeBron last night indefensible. Now, I am not the guy who makes his living arguing about LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. We actually employ people at FS1 who we've decided to put on television who all they do is argue LeBron James versus Michael Jordan every day, every game, no matter what happens. Skip Bayless and his younger flunky, uh, you guys can figure out who that is. They sit around and they argue about LeBron James versus Michael Jordan every single day. I mean, it is so goddamn boring. Anybody with a pulse is like, I don't really care that much after one more game. But it's like the Pete Rose, should he be in the Hall of Fame argument? They think that they're going to make their career off of it, and God, uh, maybe they're right. Maybe you can sit around and literally argue the same thing every day, no matter what the evidence is. Maybe there's a demand for that. My point on this is pretty straightforward. They're the two greatest basketball players of all time. Who really cares that aggressively which one of them is the best? Moreover, how can you remotely argue on a night-by-night -night basis something different, right? You've got whatever it is, 10,000 data points that you can consider in the LeBron James versus Michael Jordan argument, right? Any one additional game is not really fundamentally going to alter the overall trajectory of your argument, right? Now, an additional championship, an additional elimination, all those things are major data points. But right now, on an individual game basis, I just enjoy like making fun of the LeBron James versus Michael Jordan argument. So last night, I tweeted out, I don't remember Michael Jordan ever losing by uh, losing as a 17-point favorite after giving up a 21-point home lead. 
and everybody just loses their mind. I went and played around with it on the radio this morning again, and here's the simple truth, okay? If LeBron James is able to win a couple more championships, he'll be in the running with Michael Jordan legitimately. Right now, LeBron James has an incomplete resume, so arguing anything about LeBron James based on one game is, I think, a fallacy. Whether he goes out and scores 40 and has 15 and 10, great triple-double in the Eastern Conference Finals, or whether he performs poorly like he did last night when he vanished. He only scored 11 points, uh, he had six turnovers, and the Cavs tanked and lost to an awful Boston Celtics team in a game that, i got to be honest with you all, felt incredibly, incredibly artificial and somehow stilted and incredibly fishy. Now, I don't know what was going on, but again, the Cavs were up 21 points, and the fact that the money line paid out at 18-1, to 1, and that this was the biggest upset in the last 20 years in the NBA, something just seemed extremely fishy about it, right? Something just seemed incredibly, incredibly uh, fishy. Maybe it was Adam Silver getting on the bat phone and saying, look guys, we can't have a nine-game gap between when the NBA Eastern and Western Conference Finals ends and when the NBA Finals starts. Maybe it was LeBron James not taking his HGH and not being as worked up as he usually is. And yes, I believe that LeBron James is on some sort of performance-enhancing substance that is not illegal, that is not legal, right? I don't have any doubt at all about it. I think that it's very similar right now. The guy's 32 years old, and he hasn't lost a step. I just don't believe that that's athletically possible. I just don't believe it. I think that he is on some sort of performance-enhancing drug that isn't legal, and I think lots of guys in the NBA are. And I don't particularly care, but I think if you look at the data of what he's doing right now, and you compare it with every other NBA player that's ever existed, it doesn't make sense. Again, it'd be different if LeBron was changing his game. Like, late in Michael Jordan's career, he became more of a jump shooter. He started to make a lot more outside baskets. He wasn't blocking shots at the basketball ball, uh, rim a foot above it at the age of 32. So LeBron James at 32, I believe, is doing something to extend his reign at the top of the basketball charts. And by the way, this is not just me. This is not just me. This is many people in the NBA sit around and talk about the same thing, that LeBron's physical condition doesn't make sense relative to all the other things that are going on. Um, yeah, you can say like Tim Duncan was very consistent. Okay, Tim Duncan was very consistent, but he was a big man. Big men make sense that they can be consistent for a long time because they're not running up and down the court like gazelles. They are not necessarily blocking shots off the top of the backboard. Tim Duncan was consistent, but he wasn't able to jump out of the gym. He wasn't the biggest freak of a physical athlete on the field or the court. So I don't buy it. You guys can buy it. I think it's eerily similar. All the arguments that you guys are going to make right now are eerily similar to the arguments that were made about whether or not baseball players were juicing. People were well like, well, Barry Bonds is just able to uh, Barry Bonds is just able to extend his play as much as possible because the workout regimens have gotten better and his diet has gotten better. Same thing with Roger Clemens. Same thing with Mark McGuire. Same thing with Sammy Sosa. All these arguments were made, and they're the exact same, 100%. And so I believe that LeBron James is using performance-enhancing substances. I think a lot of people in the NBA are, not just LeBron James. And I think nobody gets – and then people say, oh, he's never been caught. Lance Armstrong didn't get caught. Lance Armstrong was doping actual blood which is crazy to think about. I think the NBA knows. They know what's going on. I think that they are aware. All these guys going to Germany for vacation to get blood spinners and everything else. I'm not even saying I particularly care. I said on the radio show this morning, if you told me I had to argue an important case before the Supreme Court and I could be 50% better at that argument if I treated myself with something right before the argument, I would do it. Wouldn't you do it? I think most people would do it, but I just don't buy in to LeBron James as just happening to be a harder worker than everybody else, just happening to have all this mileage on him starting at the age of 18, and it's had zero impact on him, and somehow he's better at 32 than he was at 31, than he was at 30, everything else. I just don't buy into it. 
So that is my thoughts on LeBron. I think the Cavs are going to win. In, sorry, I think the Warriors are going to win the series in five. I think they close out the Spurs tonight, have several days off, and then I think they run the Cavs, beat them in five games this year, and all the LeBron James uh, stands who are st jumping up, screaming about how much better uh, they are than, uh, than Michael Jordan. I, I think than he is and Michael Jordan. I think they'll all vanish. And again, if you go back and change two plays in LeBron James's career, change two plays in LeBron James's career, that Ray Allen three against the Spurs, and any number of plays down the stretch in Game 7 against the Warriors, and LeBron James has one championship. Now, he's got three, but he's won both of the times in the finals where the series has actually been tight, right? He has won 100%, and that is the truth, and I believe that they're going to lose in five games to the Warriors, and that, my friends, is prong one of the rundown today. Part two, Preds Ducks. I watched game, uh, game five at the Pearl in Rosemary. If you're familiar with 30A, great bar. They had a nice upstairs area. And uh, there were a bunch of Nashville people there. And so we watched the Preds win game five. Incredible performance by Pekka Rene. It was fantastic. All right? Just utterly fantastic. And it is, uh, is going to be a great game tonight. Again, if you're just tuning in, I'm down at the beach for the next two weeks. I am on 30A. And I'm going to tell you right now that I will be at the Hub. So if you're watching this right now and you want to watch Game 6 with me, I'm going to have my family there. We're all going to go hang out. And we're all going to watch Game 6 at the Hub, which is a bar in, uh, on the beach down here, close to the beach. And it's going to be a fantastic place to watch Game 6. Garth Brooks is performing. If you know the National Anthem singer, then you need to know uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt the National Anthem singer is getting dunked on again. There are reports that Garth Brooks is going to be on the ice following in the wake of an awful lot of big names. Again, potentially setting up the biggest week in the history of the city of Nashville from an entertainment perspective. Because I don't know if you guys have recognized this yet, but Nashville would overlap the Stanley Cup playoffs with CMA Fest. And if you have ever been to CMA Fest, as I said before, it sets a record for Plan B prescription cells in the city of Nashville. You've never seen more redneck girls in cowboy boots and sundresses, God bless them, in your entire life. Everybody from the southern region who is a hardcore country music fan and wants to stay at Motel 6 comes rolling into the suburbs of Nashville. They overload the city. If you are from here, they get all fucked up everywhere all over the city. And now you're going to combine that potentially with the Stanley Cup Finals and the city of Nashville is going to be one walking chlamydia infection for about 10 days. It's going to be incredible. It's also going to be like 150 degrees. It always is. Um, and, uh, and there's going to be so many fights with dudes in cowboy boots and belt buckles. Uh, and, uh, and it's going to be extraordinary. Now, I will miss much of this because I will be downtown. But it is going to be, it is going to be an extraordinary scene. If the Preds can win Game 6, and they're a prohibitive favorite now to win Game 6, about 70% chance, if they can win Game 6 tonight, they are going to be uh, setting up one of the most incredible weeks in the city of Nashville's history. Uh, the outkick will be a lot of fun, trust me. I want all of your reports from on the, on the ground floor of what's going on in the city of Nashville during the course of what will be an amazing week. Of, of, of events. So that is going on tonight. Again, I will be at the Hub. I'm on the beach for the next two weeks. We'll be doing normal shows. I will be doing my normal radio show, waking up at 4 a.m. down here, just like I do everywhere else, writing columns at OutKick, doing the show in the afternoon, just like I am now. But we will be out tonight for Game 6 at the Hub. Come here and hang out. All right, finally. Might be some abbreviated shows this week because I'm going to go back out to the beach, go back out and hang out as soon as I finish this show today, we got to talk about the sea lion. I don't know how many of you saw the sea lion attack. Sea lion in British Columbia, Canada, attacked a six-year-old girl who was sitting on, uh, her, uh, on her patio. It was uh, an amazing scene. If you haven't seen this video, you need, to, uh, you need to Google it. I tweeted it out over the weekend. Guy immediately dives in and saves the girl, uh, loses his sunglasses in the process, Animal Thunderdome is for real. We also had a guy get killed by an elephant. So it's amazing. This little girl is just sitting there. Next thing you know, this gigantic sea lion leaps up, grabs her, pulls her into the water, 
It was definitely welcome to the wild kingdom. The guy reacted. I got to be honest with you. Guy went in there after the sea lion instantaneously. Loose hips. Had unbelievable uh, dexterity. Got in there. Basically kicked the sea lion's ass. Pulled that girl out. And if he doesn't get pussy for two weeks in a row, I don't even want to live in America. If the guy who dove in to save the girl from the sea lion doesn't get his brain screwed out for the next two weeks straight, I don't want to live in America or Canada or any first world country. I'll tell you that damn much right now. Was it her grandfather? The grandfather better get great pussy for the next two weeks. Guy went Chuck Norris after that sea lion. I don't know if I would have done that. I'm a dad. I definitely would have probably drowned there. I've said before, if a crocodile, alligator, shark gets your kid, you got to die with him. I said last year about this time when Harambe happened, look, the only way I'm ever going to survive and be able to live with my wife if my kid ends up in the gorilla enclosure is if I let that gorilla just dash me into the rocks. Do whatever you have to do to get your kid back. Got to give credit to this guy, but, and this is a controversial opinion that I shared this morning, I put up a poll question, a lot of you disagree. Got to kill the sea lion. I'm sorry people say like the sea lion didn't do anything wrong. I, I, I don't care. I am pro-America and I'm pro-human. And I am pro-human anytime there's a conflict with an animal, I think we kill the animal. Doesn't matter. If I were King Solomon and I get a dispute and it's between animal and human, I'm going animal, losing to the human every single time. Even if, like with Harambe, the human was the asshole and caused him to die, we have dominion over the plants and the animals on Earth. We have to be in primal position here, I think you got to kill the sea lion. Even if you don't know which sea lion it is, I think you got to send a message to the rest of the sea lion community. You drag one of our girls into the water, you're wiped out. I think we go right down that dock and I think we kill all the sea lions, just like we're great white men. And if we get the wrong one, that happens. You know what happens when an alligator kills? I got to tell you, alligator kills, you go out into the lake and you get as many different alligators as you can. And most of them didn't do anything at all wrong. They're just sitting there, they're just swimming around, they're just being normal alligators. But one of their compadres did. Time to just wipe them out. Time to just wipe them out. We got to go. Uh, we got to go Hiroshima on uh, on these uh, on these sea, sea, sea lions. I don't think there's any other position you can take. I think you're a softy. I think you're going soft on sea lion crime. If you're arguing anything else other than you got to take the sea lions out, might be unfair. I'm sure Peter's going to be upset. But a sea lion goes after one of our girls. We got to take ten of them out. Ten of them out in response. I think that's what it says. That's how the that's what's written in the Bible. The Bible writes about sea lions. It says if they if they go after one of your girls, you take out ten back. All right. Questions. Questions from you guys again. Sea lion has to die. Apologies to the Canadian sea lions, but they're done. Uh, sea lion lives do not matter. Not going to say. It. What if it was Lena Dunham? I would say I would I would actually I would actually probably suggest that that sea lion should run for Prime Minister of Canada. If that had been Lena Dunham he grabbed and he took her in, first of all, he would have tried to mate with her because she looks like a sea lion too. He might have just confused her with another sea lion, especially if she was just in her bathing suit. Secondly, if it's Lena Dunham and he takes her in, that guy's got to run 100% Prime Minister of Canada. No way else that we can possibly live with. I would, I would vote for that sea lion. I think he's better than either Hillary or Trump. There's no doubt. Uh, all right, questions. Rapid fire bitches time. I am Clay Travis. Again, this is Outkick the Show. Presented by Odd Shark. Go to Odd Shark for all of your uh, gambling and informational related needs. Also, want to give props to my guys at 38 Cottages. If you're wondering how I ended up in this mansion, which hopefully I'm going to be able to give you a tour of at some point if the Wi-Fi connections are going to allow it, I will give you a tour and you can stay in a mansion like this too. All you have to do is go to 38cottages.com. 38cottages.com. Why stay in a crappy condo? Why stay in a crappy beach hotel? When you can stay in a mansion on the beach like I am, you will get hooked up big time. Again, go to 38cottages.com. Wi-Fi's been good. Wi-Fi's been good. I appreciate the feedback on the Wi-Fi. In fact, as a, as a prelude to how good the Wi-Fi is going to be, I'm going to do something risky. I'm going to try to take you and show you the beach today. Beach has been a little bit rough so far. The weather hasn't been fantastic. Can you guys see it or is it too bright? There we go. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's the danger. That's the danger of having to go with my phone. Just lost you on Facebook there for a minute. Can you guys see? Beautiful beach today. Right down there. Nice pool as well. Pretty fantastic. That is the view from Outkick for the next two weeks. I'm going to hold it up a little bit better. There you go. Nice view there. We've got a nice pool. Nice view there on the beach. Just walk out. 
So, uh, so pretty fantastic. Not a perfect beach day, just an okay day for the beach so far. But that's the view from the place today. I tried to set it up so I would have a backdrop of the beach. That didn't work as well as I had hoped. All right, uh, questions. Questions out there, rapid fire. Uh, this is a mansion. It's 5,000 square feet. It's pretty fantastic. Haven't seen any college girls down here, but I'll tell you this. No better beach in America has hotter moms than 30A. 30A down here, destined to, to this area where we are. Best looking women moms in America. Um, do I think the Preds win? Yes, I think the Preds win tonight. Again, if you're just tuning in, I will be at the Hub watching the game with my family tonight. People want to know where I'm going to be. Uh, and that is uh, the play. Do I color my beard or my hair? No, I have never used any color products. It is a MILF factory. 30A MILF factory, there's no doubt. Uh, the walkout on Pence, I think that the Notre Dame student, somebody asked about that. I think if you walk out during your commencement address, you're a huge fucking pussy. That's my opinion. DBAP is my rule of life. If you are graduating and you are so triggered by what someone is speaking about at your graduation... I think you're being a huge pussy if you walk out on that speech. I think you're trying to draw way too much attention to yourself, especially if you go to a freaking Catholic school. You could have walked out on any number of things at any point of time if you decided to go to Notre Dame. I think that all those Notre Dame students who walked out, I would not walk out on any commencement speaker. I don't think that the idea that you are somehow endorsing a commencement speaker is, to me, utterly insane. Like, you aren't endorsing a commencement speaker at all you don't have to have the same opinion as everybody else who speaks at your school. I don't know where this idea started that everybody who speaks, you have to uh, agree with. I have done a commencement speech. Uh, I haven't done a commencement speech at, at college yet. I got asked if I would do a commencement speech. I did the commencement speech. And I loved it uh, at my high school. I went to Martin Luther King Magnet High School in Nashville, Tennessee. I spoke there uh, a couple of years ago. I was their co commencement speaker. It was awesome. Um, I've met a bunch of the kids who were there at the graduation since. Uh, it was uh, it was it was pretty outstanding. So uh, so that was a uh, that was a fantastic opportunity. And uh, yeah, I mean I I think I got to put it up. Um, I would be happy to do a commencement address sometime um, if somebody wants to have me at a law school or a regular school. As my profile has grown, every now and then I get those opportunities. But yeah, I'd be happy to do a commencement address. Favorite type of beer? We're working on endorsement deals with beer, so I'm going to hold off there. Uh, Tallahassee, I'm sure, is swarming with hot college girls. Florida State, yes. The girls who weren't smart enough to get into Florida but are from all over the southeast, yeah, they're pretty good looking. No doubt at all about the hotness of Florida State girls. Uh, college should adopt the sea lion as a mascot. Ole Miss girls are great, too. Look, college girls get better looking the older I get. Let's be honest. Uh, would I pop off if people walked out while you were speaking? Yeah, I would make fun of them. Yeah, I would make fun of them. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, and uh, yeah, I did. I gave a speech at Bridgestone. I gave speeches all over the place. I get paid a lot of money for speeches now. Um, and that's probably the way that I make the money that I enjoy the most because I show up, I talk for an hour, I get to go to a cool city, I get to go talk usually to a pretty cool group. Uh, there's an open bar, I get to meet a lot of fun people, and I get to speak to a lot of different groups. So uh, I, I make money a lot of different ways now, but that's pretty fantastic. Um, what's a lot of money on speeches? I can make 20 grand a speech um, now, which is pretty fantastic. So I consider that to be a lot of money to talk for an hour. Um, so uh, that is a, uh, that's a pretty fantastic gig. I think Trish and Garth are both going to perform tonight. Could I beat a sea lion? I, don't, I think a sea lion's underrated in strength. I think a sea lion is under, underrated in strength. I'm not sure that I could beat up a sea lion. I mean, these things fight great white sharks. Um, I haven't seen the Major League Baseball Venezuela videos. I don't know anything about the Venezuela stuff. If people are upset about Venezuela, shouldn't they be upset about their country collapsing? I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on what's going on there. Uh, what do I like about speaking to young writers? I like telling them not to be pussies. That's what I like about speaking to young people in general. I think everybody has an idea that life is going to be easier than it actually is. And I think you have to be tough. And I like the idea that I've got to toughen them up a little bit. Um, that, that's, my, that's my favorite part. Uh, before or after taxes, that's before taxes. Before, if you missed the before or after taxes rant, uh, that, that turned out pretty well. I saw Melania not holding Trump's hand. I think it's weird. 
uh, I don't know about you, but I don't hold my wife's hand very much in public. I hold my kids' hands, like to help them cross the street and stuff, but I'm not the hand-holding type. So I totally get Melania being like, I don't want to hold your hand. Like, we're adults. Like, I'm a grown person. Like, I, I, I don't think it's a, I, I wouldn't want to hang it, hold it, uh, my wife's hand that much either. Now, if I were president, I don't think that my wife would turn me down on the handhold in public when I'm walking around with the Israeli president and everybody else. Um, and maybe she's mad at him for something. I, I don't know. I love how people think that because you're president, your wife's not going to get mad at you. Uh, I think that happens all the time. And it actually makes me like Melania more because that makes me think that she's totally normal, that she's pissed off about something that he did. He didn't give her enough compliments on her dress. He, uh, he was snoring the night before. Uh, he, uh, he wasn't you know, helpful enough with the kid because he had trouble on his homework. And he was like, I've gotta, I've got, I'm sorry, I've got to get ready for this Saudi Arabian diplomacy. I don't have time to help with, uh, with reading you know, the kid a book before bed tonight. And then his wife holds him against it, hold it against him. I love the idea that that would humanize Donald Trump to a large extent if his wife's mad at him, just like everybody else. So that would, uh, that would, be, my, uh, that would be my thoughts on that. I bet he's a snorer too. He doesn't seem like he has great health. I would think that Trump probably snores pretty, pretty substantially. She is hot, yes. And he, uh, she married him. Uh, I remember the Ted Cruz daughter issue. I definitely remember that. When everybody was like, oh, he hates... She hates it. Like, even his daughter hates Ted Cruz. And everybody who was a parent was like, actually, if you've ever been a parent in that situation, it's readily apparent that your kid could be just a total jerk to you at that point in time because he or she hasn't had enough to eat because they didn't sleep enough the night before. Like, it's, uh, it's totally ex expected that something like that could happen. Um, okay. I love all you guys. I'm headed back to the beach. Again, we're going to be live from the beach all week. If you are in 30A and you want to watch the Preds game tonight, I'm going to go watch it at the Hub. Game 6 starts at 7 o'clock uh, Central Time, I believe. So I will be over there with my family. Come with your family. Uh, say hi if you are there. NBA pick tonight. I, I'm leery on betting on the NBA right now because these teams are such huge favorites. I would probably be inclined to go Spurs, but I don't think I'm going to bet again until we end up back in the NBA Finals and I start to get a better read on things. I didn't bet on the 17-point line. I thought it was insane last night. I just don't trust the way these things are going. Uh, okay, love you guys. Uh, have fun if you're going to be at Bridgestone tonight. Go Preds. Say hi to Garth Brooks for me. If you're down on the beach, come hang out with us tonight. I love you guys. I am Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. Go to Odd Shark for all your gambling and informational related needs. And if you want to stay in a spectacular mansion on the beach, go to 30acottages.com. That's 30 30acottages.com. I'm Clay Travis. This has been Outkick, the show, DBAT.